For your e-commerce business to succeed, there are 10 things that must be included on your website. And in this video, I'm gonna run you through all 10 so you can see why you need them and what they should look like based on some real world examples. If you haven't launched your store yet, think of this video as a pre-launch checklist. Or if you've already launched, then use this checklist to audit your site and make sure you've ticked all the boxes. But why should you take advice from us? Well, before we developed and sold plugins, Barn2 was originally a web development agency run by our two founders, Katie and Andy Keith. They used a fine-tuned formula for building and maintaining successful WooCommerce websites. So now I'm here to share that knowledge with you guys, along with the latest research, so you too can succeed with WooCommerce. Now, the first thing on our list to take care of is your business license. If you don't have one already, you should get that process started as soon as possible. Obviously, the rules and steps for obtaining a business license will differ based on your location and the types of products you sell. So check your local laws. In the US, you'll need a federal license or permit if a federal agency regulates your business activities. Next up is essential pages. Based on our research, these are the pages that every website should have as a baseline, no matter what. On this list of essential pages, we have a homepage, of course, which is often the first page people will see. It can act as a landing page, highlighting your new products, sales, offers, and assist with navigation to certain categories or products. Make sure to include a clear value proposition above the fold. Then moving on, there's the About Us page, which helps establish trust with your potential customers. Then there's a contact page, which makes it easy for users to get in touch with you. Then consider adding an FAQ or frequently asked questions page. This can be spread over multiple pages or added to another standard page as needed. Then there are also three to four legal pages that you need to include. A terms of use document or terms and conditions page. This should be a professional, well-written document that customers can easily find on your website. And it describes the rules for using your e-commerce store and it's essential for protecting you legally. Then there's a privacy policy, which is another essential legal document to have on your website. This policy helps establish trust with your users and again, protects you legally. Some third parties also require you to have a privacy policy before they work with you. Then in addition to your privacy policy, you should also include a return policy, which describes the rules and procedures for returning purchased items. A customer-friendly return policy can really encourage people to buy more from you, as they know it's easy to return the goods that don't fit their needs. It's common practice to put these three documents in the footer of e-commerce websites, such as in this example from Walmart's website. If you are collecting and storing credit card information on your site, you need to make sure first that your website is compliant with the payment card industry data security standards. If however, you are taking payments offsite by using a gateway such as Stripe or PayPal, then this is not applicable to you. Third on our list is store pages. In addition to the standard web pages that every website has, there are a number of additional pages created automatically by the WooCommerce plugin, and each of them needs to be optimized to suit both your design and your business needs. Now, we obviously can't ignore the main shop page, as it's likely to be one of the first pages that customers will see after your homepage. Although admittedly, it can be tricky to customize using the available options in your theme settings, there are a few tips I have for you. Use breadcrumbs across your entire store to help shoppers stay oriented. And when displaying items in a grid layout, include the following information in addition to a high quality photo. Make sure you have a product name, price, reviews, and add to cart button all clearly visible and easy to click on. Add product filters to a side widget or as drop down menus above the product grid. If you want to test out Barn 2's filter plugin, there's a link below to a live demo for you to try out. Also, consider using a different layout, like a table layout. Depending on your business and what you're selling, your customers may prefer a product table, which they can use to find more products and order them much faster and easier than the traditional grid layout. Once again, you can try out our table plugin with the link below. A lot of vendors also utilize a wishlist plugin to help nudge shoppers towards additional purchases. 
This is certainly nice to have, but technically optional. In any case, there's a link for our favorite plugin in the description. Then we have category pages. Each product category you create can have its own page, which should generally match the design of your main shop pages. But you can also include a header section if it's in line with the design of the rest of your site. The single product pages are a great opportunity to give the customer every bit of info they need before they hit the buy button. Try to provide multiple product images and even videos if possible. Showcase the product from multiple angles and depict how it looks in real life. In the product description, include all essential details, features, benefits, uses, and specifications. This includes things like measurements and dimensions, materials, and care instructions. Variable products will need to have their options clearly displayed, such as swashes for clothing colors. This can be set up natively in WooCommerce, but it's a lot of work and the way they are displayed is not ideal. So we recommend an add-ons plugin like WooCommerce product options from Barn2, also linked below. This will liven up the process of customizing products and can even lead to upsells along the way. Don't forget to include applicable taxes, shipping, and other fees, plus available discounts or promotions if you have any. And in a quick fire round, here are some things to consider adding. Customer reviews and ratings, a product comparison table, warranty and return policy, and some frequently asked questions about the product. Number four on our list is the cart and checkout process. After shopping, every customer will need to visit the cart and checkout pages. There are several things you can do here, like adding a discount code option, for example, but most of the major changes are enabled by third-party plugins. For example, WooCommerce Fastcart is a great option because it speeds up the cart and checkout flow for customers. You can add a floating cart that will pop up on the same page that customers are shopping on, reducing the number of steps to purchase. Your checkout process is crucial for keeping your cart abandonment rate low. The real key here is information. Shipping details and additional fees need to be clearly visible here so customers don't feel lied to. We'll talk more about shipping in a moment, but an integration with shipping providers can give customers real-time information based on their postcode. Also, include a guest checkout option for non-members and minimize the amount of information customers need to input wherever possible. Now let's move on to the fifth item on our list, payment processing. Every store needs multiple ways to accept payments, and the more, the merrier. For credit cards, I always recommend Stripe. And as a backup, it's good to include PayPal and even a local bank transfer option if possible. For example, in Poland, there's a popular payment service called Blick that securely facilitates bank transfers, which is ideal for small businesses. Don't forget to thoroughly test each one of these options before offering them to real customers. For number six, I'm lumping together taxes and shipping rates because I know from experience that it can be hard to set these up correctly. For taxes, I would recommend seeking out professional accounting assistance or integrating your products into a software that can calculate tax rates in a more accurate way. For more information, visit the WooCommerce taxes documentation page linked below. For shipping, I recommend integrating with major providers, such as DHL, UPS, and any other local options that you may have in your country or state. A plugin such as EasyShip can help tremendously with this process, so I've linked that option below. Now the seventh item on our checklist is inventory management software. Being a merchant means you're constantly trying to balance between spending too much and being overstocked or spending too little and missing out on sales due to low stock. To help you manage this, I love recommending this plugin by Adam. This free inventory management tool offers an intuitive dashboard and stock central interface that provides complete control over product inventory, suppliers, SKUs, locations, weights, and pricing. It has an intuitive layout, which integrates with the WordPress admin, making it easy to quickly edit all aspects of your WooCommerce stock. Number eight on our list is email automation. Now emails serve two main functions in e-commerce, to inform and to increase sales. Order updates and payment confirmations can be set up in WooCommerce itself, although you may wanna look into a free customizer plugin that will make the emails themselves look much more professional and on brand. 
For marketing purposes, I recommend a third-party option like Omnisend. They make it really easy to set up email sequences and target specific groups within your customer base. You can check out the video I made all about email automation and customization in the video in the cards up here. Number nine is to optimize all of your site's images. Images that load too slowly can ruin your user experience and your performance in search engines. And slower load times on a large scale can lead to lower conversion rates. Check your theme's recommended settings and image sizes to make sure that all of your images, including product images and lifestyle images, are optimized for the web. There are also image optimization plugins available, or you can use your own editing software to resize images in bulk. Now for the final thing on our list, let's touch on marketing for a second. Everything from SEO to paid ads, social media, and seasonal discounts will help you bring in new customers, while emails and retargeting ads can be used to keep them coming back. But as you can imagine, this is way beyond the scope of today's video. So to get started with offering discounts in WooCommerce, you can check out this video I made here. And to test any of the Barn2 plugins that I mentioned today, you can use this link here. And of course, thanks for watching.